Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and today I am here with another book review. I have been doing a pretty good job of staying on top of my Illumicrate books. Um, I had this whole plan to read through the backlog of books that I've gotten from Illumicrate over the last couple of years and whenever I finish one I'm uh, going to do a video review in order to kind of up the ante, so to speak, in 2022, I decided I was also going to try to read the books as I got them. Um, so I did read the December book. Uh, I did a little bit of the read-along that Illumicrate does. They, their read-alongs are always the month after the box or the, that the book comes in. So if it's a December book, it's the read-alongs in January. January's book was a, was a read-along in February. So, anyway, um, I have now gotten my January book, and I read it, and I read it in February uh, during the read-along with Ellen Great, and I'm here to review it, and it is This Woven Kingdom by Tahira Mafi. So, this is the first book from Tahira Mafi that I'm reading. Um, I know that she's got, like... I don't know, like 30 or 40 books. She's, she's got a massive uh, backlog. Um, honestly, the name of her most famous... Oh, it's um, Shatter Me. I was going to say it was, it was escaping my memory, but Shatter Me was her big um, breakout, and I never read it. Um, I think it's a little bit more dystopian. This is young adult fantasy. Um, and this, by the way, is the gorgeous Illumicrate edition uh, with this beautiful sprayed edge uh, and this design. It's a naked hardback. Um, it's got these great orange end papers and um, I don't think it's... No, this one this one wasn't signed um, and we didn't get a little book plate, but that's that's okay. They don't, they don't always come with one, but um, it's a gorgeous edition. I was really excited when I opened the box and I saw it. I was like, ooh, that's really pretty. And then I read the description, I was like, oh, that sounds even more interesting, and like I said, I know that Tahara Mafi, there, she's got a lot of fans out there of the Shatter Me series. Like I said, I've never read that, um, but I went ahead and picked this up because it was the Illumicrate book. Um, I honestly, I don't know if I would have picked it up if, if I hadn't gotten it from Illumicrate, not because it's not something that I was interested in, because definitely when I read the description, uh, I was like, that sounds awesome. I'm very excited to read it. Uh, I think it's just partly because it's young adult fantasy and I've been getting a little bit farther away from young adult lately. Um, the one area that I kind of do kind of keep coming back to is young adult fantasy. Basically, I've just realized that young adult is... A genre that I'm not as enamored of as I used to be. Uh, I tend to disagree with a lot of the, the character motivations. I find the teenagers irritating um, and there are a lot of tropes that I'm not a fan of. That's not to say that there's not good young adult literature out there and it's not to say that good uh, young adult uh, subgenres like young adult fantasy exist. Obviously I read this, I really liked it, um, so my point on all of this is just to say I don't think I would have picked it up had it not been for Illumicrate simply because it's young adult fantasy and it just would have kind of been at the very bottom of my list. There are a lot of other uh, adult fantasy um, books that I'm currently excited to pick up. So it is a fantasy story. Uh, it uh, follows this girl uh, Eliza or Eliza um, and a crown prince Cameron, uh, and basically those are the only two perspectives we get. It's a fantasy world in which Jin, um, or as some people would know them as genies, uh, Jin exist and they had existed for a long while and then um, the history is a little bit foggy in this and that would probably be my first sort of slight complaint is that there's a lot of history that this world needs that I don't think is very well explained in this book. Um, but 
there was this sort of tension between the jinn and um, what is referred to in this book as the clay, which I guess we'd, you would say is just like normal people. Um, jinn have powers. Um, they're, they have a magic. They also have um, some like inherent uh, extra strength and long life longevity, that kind of thing. Um, the normal kind of stuff that comes along with magical um, beings. And then they're the clay who are essentially humans without uh, beings without any powers. Um, so the background is that there was this war between the clay and the jinn, and it happened years ago. And Eliza, um, it's I don't think it's a spoiler to say, but she's actually kind of a long lost jinn princess. Um, it's made pretty clear in the first couple chapters that that's the case uh, and she's been kind of living in secret uh, working as a servant in the capital of the kingdom of the clay kingdom and um, Cameron is the prince and the, and I forget the name of the the kingdom because there are a couple of different kingdoms that get referenced and we do meet a character from one of the other kingdoms near the end of the book um, so yeah, background is she's a lost princess, um, he's a, a prince, and basically they're a little bit, it's a little bit like a Romeo and Juliet, Juliet kind of thing, you know, opposite sides of the, of, um, the path, uh, there's a little bit of a romance, but really it's about her and him and they kind of find each other and there are these prophecies and there are a whole bunch of other underlying concerns. Um, you know, she, it's a, there's a prophecy that might involve her that suggests that there might be a war that breaks out because of her. Um, and so it's kind of your normal fantasy fair. Uh, two young characters, one with magic, one about to sort of ascend to the throne and there's tension between the people and there are tensions between the kingdoms and there's also sort of this other underlying issue um that I, this will probably be my second complaint um first complaint being about the history not being super well explained the second complaint is there's this sort of throwaway line early in the in the book about uh water wells kind of drying up and water is a very important element to the story. It's especially important to the, the jinn who uh, part of their um, being makeup is that they can basically live off of just water. Um, so there's this whole sort of underlying thing about the water potentially disappearing or, or they might be reaching a drought but it's mentioned like once at the beginning of the book, kind of in passing, and then it's not really ever referenced again. So I imagine, I know that it it, it ends on a bit of a cliffhanger. Uh, Tahara Mafia has already mentioned that there's going to be at least another book in the series. Uh, she's signed on for three, I think, but she has not committed herself to saying it's just going to be a trilogy or if she's just going to sort of write it as it comes to her. I could see multiple books coming out of uh, storylines that were sort of started in this. So, like I said, my first complaint was the sort of lack of in-depth history. Um, my second complaint was about the water thing, which actually is sort of a broader issue. There are a couple of things that happen, a couple of characters that are introduced and sort of problems that are presented that aren't really touched upon after their first mention and they seem like they're going to be big things and the fact that we don't ever really kind of come back to them was a little bit frustrating because I felt like the book not a lot happened. <laughs> um, I kind of expected that we were going to get to a bigger point in the story um, near the end. It does kind of end on a big event and 
there are definitely things leading up to it that are interesting and I and I think that it's really well written. I really love the characters and I really love um, their interactions. But it kind of felt like there were a lot of pieces being laid out and the story, you know, it's 500 pages and like I'm, I'm getting to the end, I'm going, well, what about that thing or that thing or that thing or that other thing that was mentioned? Like we're never, you know, are we gonna come back to that in the next book? And, you know, so, I guess I would maybe say that's a pacing issue or potentially just like this whole book felt a little bit like exposition. Um, however, <laughs> I really liked it. Uh, so I, I really, really, really liked it. I really liked the two characters. I loved their uh, chemistry. I loved the world that she built and I do, like, I think that the reason that the history thing bothered me is because I wanted more of that. And I know, and this is where I would maybe say it's, it does lean a little bit more in the young adult fantasy uh, genre, in that in young adult I feel like you can sometimes get away with not being as in-depth with your background, um, because it's almost more character plot driven. So. And, and whereas like in a, an adult fantasy you would have that expectation. You would just expect that like the first book would be six or seven hundred pages and the first three hundred of that would be history and setup and world building and that's what you get into. This feels like the world building is sort of background to the characters, um, which is not, not a bad thing. Um, like I said, I think it's just that tends to be a little bit more of a young adult thing. I, I wouldn't necessarily complain about the pacing, I just want to make reference to it because I do think that if you go into it and you're kind of paying attention um, to some of the, like I said, some of those things that get mentioned, they're not all going to get resolved. Uh, so that's, and like I said, it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just sort of, oh okay, when I got to the end I was like, it's going to be a series, it's going to be at least, you know, two or three books, okay, that's fine, like I can get into that and like, in the next book hopefully we get some of those other things um, answered or, or at least like returned to. So yes, so like I said, the, the pacing, um, some of the uh, lack of history, lack of returning to um, certain story elements, those were my really only my, my two complaints. Other than that, I think it's wonderfully well written. I think her writing style is incredibly engaging. Her characters are incredibly well developed uh, from the first chapters that they're introduced. Uh, and even the side characters who we don't get to interact with a lot, uh, and which I would hope would be addressed in the, in the next book, that we get to kind of revisit some of these characters and get to spend more time with them. I'm, I'm a big fan of multiple points of view stories. Um, I think that they're more engaging, especially in a fantasy world. So not having those other characters really get a point of view, um, that's something that I would hope for in the future, but I really think that even the secondary characters are really well developed. They jump off the page. Uh, the world is incredibly rich, so despite the fact that she doesn't necessarily spend a good ch chunk of time at the beginning kind of building this world, she does it as you go along and there's a lot of history sort of touched on in some of the like descriptions of the, tra the traditions that they're doing. Um, so there is some of that history laid in, it's just kind of the history of this war and this tension and the the existence of this this whole you know kingdom and the, the, the surrounding kingdoms that's not really um, laid out uh, as well but like I said some of the the traditions, like especially with the El Eliza or Eliza, um, her culture is the Jin culture, and there's a lot of mythology that she that Tahara Mafia has put into this around that culture, and I love that. I think it makes it incredibly rich, it makes Eliza's character um, very relatable and very engaging. So, loved the characters, loved the world that we're in. Like I said, those other things that I but slightly complain about, uh, you know, it's it's the only reason that I that I would dock at any kind of points on on the rating, um, 
The other thing that I wanted to mention real quick is uh, I did say that it's young adult fantasy and it kind of cheats. Uh, the main characters I think are 18 or about to be 18 and so they kind of just get into the young adult age range and I feel like had they been just a little bit older this could have been very easily marketed as an adult book, uh, adult fantasy. Um, but I think that some of the things that, like I said, some of the lack of world building or some of the lack of history kind of brings it back to, to young adults. So not necessarily a complaint, just explaining why it's, why I do consider it young adult, um, but that I think that it could appeal, potentially appeal to people who are adult fantasy readers and who perhaps don't care as much about the world building or the, um, the historical setting, um, because there's still a lot of uh, detail about the magic system. There's still a lot of um, detail about where the plot is going. So not necessarily a complaint that it's young adult. Like I said, it's just one of those things that when I'm looking at a book and if I'm choosing between what to pick up next and it's a young adult fantasy versus an adult fantasy, I'm almost always going to go for the adult fantasy just because I tend to think that they're a little bit more detailed and rich um, in terms of uh, world building and uh, history. However, I think that young adult tends to be a lot more character driven, so the characters are usually pretty well developed and um, engaging in, in that way. So <laughs> that was sort of a long-winded uh, explanation of the book, kind of a discussion of young adult fantasy versus adult fantasy, um, but I, like I said, I really ended up uh, loving this book. I'm very much looking forward to the next book. I'm sad because there currently isn't a publication date <laughs> on Goodreads, which means that um, she hasn't written it yet. <laughs> She's not. I mean, this book just came out. I think it came out in January or February. It was the January Olympicrate, so it was probably published in February. Um, so yes, so I really liked it. I gave it uh, four and a half out of five stars. Clearly I liked this Woven Kingdom. Like I said, it sounds from my review that I kind of didn't, um, but I just, I, like I said, those were kind of elements that I wanted to talk about because I know that there are some fantasy readers who are picky about that. Um, I, I'm not necessarily picky about it. It's, it is something that I tend to prefer. Um, but yes, I really liked it, uh, and I'm very excited to be continuing on with my Lumicrate uh, review series. I do have a couple of other reviews posted, I'll leave them linked up here. Uh, but as for today, that is all I have. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't read The Swelping Kingdom yet and you're interested in it, I would absolutely recommend picking it up. And uh, in the meantime, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up subscribe to see more. I talk about books and movies on this channel, so if that sounds interesting, click subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye!